Well, I'm doing good. <laughs> Thank you for everybody joining us today for the Gaming for Good panel. My name is Sam Press. I'll be your moderator today. And along with me, we have some awesome panelists that have all done some amazing, amazing work for charities, raising hundreds of thousands of dollars, up to millions of dollars for really cool causes, their favorite charities, your favorite charities. And today, we're going to kind of go into a couple things about who they are, where they came from, a little bit where, why they got into it, uh. and talk about what are their impacts, what are their wins and achievements. And for a lot of you guys, you probably want to know how to get involved, and some really good ways to do that. So, I'm going to hop right to me, real quick intro. Uh, again, Stamp Press is my name. I'm a full-time senior marketing manager at a company called Elgato Gaming. Make awesome capture cards, so when you live stream a charity event, talk to me. I'll get you prizing, and we'll get you squared away with gear. But previously done a lot of cool stuff at some other accessory brands, former pro gamer, and really grateful that these guys asked me to be here. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, is have each of these guys take a couple minutes to introduce themselves, kind of talk about who they are, what they do, maybe describe it for a minute or two each, and talk a little about how you got into it, because that's something that's really cool for me to find out, too. And we're going to start with Andrew. Hi, I'm uh, Andrew Sippets. I am the Bay Area Guild leader for Extra Life. Um, this is my first year doing this, but uh, I've been involved with Extra Life for three years now. Uh, I really just got into it because I wanted to figure out a way to use some of the skills I've been picking up in the workplace to kind of contribute to the community and uh, help a charity organization that I really believed in. Um, my day-to-day -day job is not what I do full-time, unfortunately, but I'm a producer at DNA, a mobile game company here in the Bay Area. Is that good? <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. <laughs> but if you can tell us a little about how you got into it, why you got into it. Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that like, <laughs> a couple years ago, some friends wanted to do it, uh, the co-workers, and we just turned it into a big office party. Uh, we had a good time for, like, six hours, and then it turned into like 18 hours of hating each other and just <laughs> being tired. But we made it through and we raised a lot of money and it was a lot of fun. So every year I just push myself to keep trying and uh, doing better with it. Awesome, thank you, man. Uh, next up we have Rebecca Wilson. So uh, as Stan said, my name is Rebecca. So I actually work at the Children's Hospital in the Bay Area. So I'm a senior officer at Children's Hospital in Oakland and I work on all Children's Miracle Network initiatives. So if you're not familiar with Children's Miracle Network, this is a national nonprofit that raises funds for 170 children's hospitals all across the United States and Canada. And so here in the Bay Area, all of the Children's Miracle Network initiatives from the icons that you can be asked to purchase at the registers of a Costco or a Walgreens to programs like Extra Life all go to benefit our hospital. So Children's Miracle Network is really the essence of support local. Everything that happens in any of the communities that we're doing efforts go back to that local hospital so that everyone participating knows that everything that they're doing is really impacting their community. It doesn't go into some black hole. Nothing that we do actually goes to the underwriting of salaries. Everything that is raised through Children's Miracle Network initiatives goes directly to the hospital's bedside. So I am a foundation employee and I started working at the hospital about a year ago and I really just fell into fundraising in general. I was not on my radar at all, and Extra Life was not something I even knew about last year. So in the last year, I've really become the lead organizer for this effort in the Bay Area locally, and I work with Andrew as well as the other guild members to really spread the word to get people excited about Extra Life here in the Bay Area, to onboard companies, solo rangers that just want to do it by themselves, the whole gamut. And really that's kind of the pride of my efforts at the foundation is really supporting Extra Life because it's such a huge initiative for our hospital. It was actually one of the larger fundraisers that we had all together. It raised over $370,000 for us. So huge, huge, huge initiative for us and making a huge impact for kids right directly in the hospital. Awesome, thank you, Rebecca. And Crystal, can you tell us a little about yourself here? Hey everyone, I'm Crystal Herring. Um, I work with Ubisoft, I'm a frag doll. I've been with Ubisoft for about four years now and I actually live in San Diego but I'm very attached to the Bay Area. Um, two initiatives that I'm, you know, 100% passionate about are Extra Life 
And then my second one is actually the Mac AIDS Foundation, which I've been working with for about nine years. So those two are my babies that I try to give every moment of time and money that I can. And one of the biggest things that I love is our communities and being gamers. And I think it's just something that is fantastic. Um, myself, I think with the Mac AIDS Fund, again, that's something that's also global, along with the charities that we like to do, such as Extra Life, St. Jude's. Um, but one of the things that I'm passionate about is the community and the people that get behind it and the people that, even if you don't have the money to donate, at least donate the time. And that's something that I love about gamers because a lot of gamers are broke. I mean, it happens. <laughs> but we've got friends and family and coworkers and people that can really help out. So that's kind of what I'm here for in the community. So, and I want to thank you guys, too, if you're a part of it. Awesome. Thank you, Crystal. And John, can you tell us a little about yourself here? Uh, my name's John. I am the Director of Partner Development at Twitch. If you're not familiar with Twitch, it's the largest live broadcasting platform for gamers. Um, I got involved in the charity efforts quite a while back. I was actually one of the, one of the first guys to broadcast an Extra Life Charity Marathon back when Twitch was still just in TV. Um, we set a really small goal for ourselves, I think $2,000, and we ended up raising 38000 in 24 hours. So we became really attached to this, and this is something that we spend an entire year planning. This year we rented out a venue for about 100 people in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to invite whoever they want to come and have a huge LAN party with us to raise funds. Um, last year we raised about a quarter of a million dollars. This year we're hoping to raise about a half a million dollars in 24 hours. It's a lofty goal, but... Yeah. We're looking forward to it. Um, and as far as Twitch, um, charity events are some of the biggest events that we have on our platform. If you, if you look at just the last year, I think Stan actually will have that information in a slide later on. Um, there's a group called Speedruns Live, and they are just a group of gamers that beat games really quickly. So if you think you're good at video games, you're not after you watch them play. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, not good at all. One of them beat Skyrim, if you're familiar with that, in about eight minutes, I think, was, was his record time or something. He just walks up to a mountain, knows a specific pixel that he can hit A, and it just lets him launch through the mountain and fight the last dragon. <laughs> so he's not actually beating the game, but it's still pretty neat. Um, they, were, they raised a million dollars for their first event this year, and then they had their last event last week, and they had raised uh, three quarters of a million dollars over the course of a week. And they choose a different charity initiative for each event, so they, they spread the love throughout the year. And uh, next year, next year's going to be really big for them. So charity's a big part of Twitch. Charity's a big part of what I do uh, every year with my gaming efforts. And it's, it's good. It's fun. Awesome. Thank you, John. And we'll definitely touch up on some of the very cool things that you can do on Twitch and work with other platforms, such as uh, not platforms, other organizers other events, other tournaments. They do a lot of really cool stuff, and John can probably speak to that better than I can. And next up will be Lizzie. Hi, I'm Lizzie Cuevas. I'm the Director of Communications at Humble Bundle. Um, we organize pay what you want promotions um, for PC games and some Android games. We also just recently started selling eBooks, um, and customers can pay what they want and decide where their money goes. Um, between the developers or content creators and charity. Um, and the company started in 2010, and since then we've raised um, more than $40 million for charity so far. So that's pretty incredible. And um, we also just recently launched a Humble Store, which you could buy PC games DRM-free and for Steam on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and 10% of all sales go to select charities. Um, I've been in the games industry for seven years, uh, and um, I got into Humble as first as a fan because I love indie games, and a lot of my friends are indie game developers, so when I started at Humble, it's really cool to work with your friends and also support good causes at the same time, so. Awesome. Thank you, Lizzie. I think it's a good time, now that we know what people have done, where they come from, we can ask some really cool questions on some of the impacts of the gaming charities that you all work on. So I'm going to throw out a question there, whoever wants to jump out this first. What would be the total impact that your organization or company has made towards gaming charities? I believe in the last year, Twitch uh, broadcasters have raised nearly $8 million in total, something <laughs> close to that. That's a lot, wow. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit more about some of those charities that the, some of the organizations that actually made those charities, those um, events, actually? 
You mean, you mean the broadcasters that have done it or the organizations that they've benefited? Uh, both, actually. Okay, so one of our largest contributors is Athene. I'm not sure who's familiar with Athene. Um, he spends a lot of his time streaming. You know, he sells tons of channel subscriptions, does a lot of content on YouTube, and he gives every dime that he earns to charity. Wow. Um, I think he splits it up for multiple. I'm not really sure exactly who he donates to. And then St. Jude is a new one that's just gotten into the space this year. They're running a, a, long, a long form charity event called Play Life. I think it's going to be eight to 12 weeks. Um, that, that's been going pretty well. We have a lot of people who've already raised a couple hundred thousand dollars for them. And then Extra Life Children's Miracle Network is I think the biggest and probably the strongest brand in, in gaming charities. It's, just, it's a huge event for Twitch. We have a, we have a game. When, you, when, you, when you're broadcasting on Twitch, you can select a game, whatever game you're playing, so people can discover you. We have a game called Extra Life, just so we can aggregate everybody together. And last year, during the, the Extra Life weekend, um, we had something like five or 6,000 people playing Extra Life as a game wow. at any given time. It was, it was really cool to see. And I have a lot of fun with it, because I put aside some of my own money, and I go find the streamers who hadn't been, hadn't been making any money from streaming. Nobody had found their streams. They've been broadcasting for 12 hours and raise no money, go in, throw a couple guys 20 bucks and make their day. It's worth their time. If they make $20 for playing video games for 24 hours, it's a pretty solid investment to me, personally. Absolutely. That's awesome. And you said there was about five, 6,000 individual broadcasters. Yes, something like that. Jer Jeremy from Extra Life, who I'm very close friends with, he's the, he started the, the thing. Um, he, he would have the better numbers. She should know them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the beauty of the event is that Jeremy runs it. He yeah. really does run it he at is, the national level, yeah. and I'm really more intimate with kind of yeah. the localized initiative. So I just yeah. don't know the exact it's, stats. But it was I'm ridiculous. Sure impressive. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I'll, I'll call Jeremy afterwards. I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, uh, Rebecca and Andrew, you mm -hmm. can tell us a little bit more about what you guys have done locally. Absolutely. So for Children's Hospital Oakland last year, over $370,000 was raised for Extra Life, and pretty much all of that was in that last 24 hours. And so with that money, 100% of that is unrestricted funding for our hospital. So that goes to everything from literally gas vouchers and food vouchers for families who come to the hospital and literally have no way of getting back home. We serve a very high population of under basically underserved individuals. About 70% of our patients fall under the Medi-Cal program so we get 20 cents on the dollar for the vast majority of our patients and we have about a 50 million dollar charity budget every single year that we have to provide in order to give the kids that come to our hospital ad adequate care so when we get unrestricted funding we really can use that for everything so it goes to helping us provide gaming equipment at the hospital a lot of our kids actually are sitting in the hospital day in and day out without anything to do and one of our child life specialists who is basically, it's a group of individuals who all they do is try and normalize the hospital setting. So they do everything from bringing birthdays to the hospital to Halloween. And they say the number one thing that we're most frightened of when a child is admitted is boredom. That's the number one thing that, that, that really could impact their ability to heal. And so at our hospital, we can't actually stream anything. So there's no YouTube, there's no Netflix, there's no anything. All they really have is games. So we have portable gaming carts that will go to bedsides. We have an entire room filled with games and with Extra Life, we really can ensure that we have up-to-date equipment, that we have enough equipment to actually satisfy the needs of a lot of our patients. And without that type of funding that's unrestricted, it's really challenging for us to provide those types of things. And Extra Life dollars also go to actually just providing the medical treatment. You know, a chemo treatment can cost $20,000. And so when you have a, a, a pot of money that you really can use to help subsidize these types of treatments that kids actually need, it becomes really, really life or death. It really becomes a life-saving event. And the motto of Extra Life is literally play games, heal kids, and it, it's really true. It, the money that we raise through this effort, it truly does heal kids. I think for... Um one of the benefits of living in the Bay Area is we have a lot of tech, a lot of gaming industries, a lot of press in the area. And uh, for each year that I've participated in it, it has been with a company and a group of coworkers who've really kind of turned it into a team bonding exercise or um, just sort of a, a party, basically. Um, on top of that, though, the tech companies tend to bring in a lot of money. They tend to, you know, really rally behind this idea of a 24-hour gaming marathon. Uh, so hopefully one of our initiatives this year is to bring in more and more of the local Bay Area tech and startup uh, community, as well as bring in, you know, um, 
press and, and things that we might have locally available to us. Very cool. And Greg, I think there was a number in specifically that you mentioned that was raised so far just from the Bay Area alone. Mm -hmm. Can you share that with everybody? Right. So it was about three hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and we ended up winning the Diablo Challenge, which essentially was um, the number one fundraising hospital got an additional sixty thousand dollars added to their total raised. So that was a huge, huge plus for us. And you know, Children's Hospital in Boston, they definitely go really hard. And then Rooster Teeth was supporting Dell Children's Hospital. So there was a lot of hospitals that were raising a, a really tremendous amount of money last year. So it's just really exciting to get that type of energy around the effort because it benefits all of the hospitals. The more competitive it gets, the more people are saying, hey, I want my hospital to be number one, it benefits everyone because everyone just double downs. And when you get that type of commitment and effort from the community, the kids win. No matter what hospital they're being served by, they're, they're all winning. Rebecca, what are the top cities right now? Right now, CHLA is doing pretty good in terms of participants, right? So we like to think about Extra Life as you really want people to do it, and then you worry about the dollars raised right at the end. So Boston, they really do have a really nice uh, kind of grassroot effort on the street. So they have about 400 people currently participating. We have about 300 people participating. CHLA has about 300 people. Um, I know that Houston, they're They've been doing it since the beginning. That was like the first hospital that uh, Jeremy Adams was supporting through Extra Life efforts. So they're in the, the top rung right now in Seattle. Seattle is pretty good at getting people on the board. Very cool. And real quick, while we're on the topic of Extra Life Bay Area, how could people check that out and join up? Awesome. So a <laughs> couple of ways. We are actually here at Gamer X. We'll be here the entire weekend, and we've got a table as well as me just running around and asking you if you've ever heard of Extra Life. So look at my face, you will see me, and I will ask you if you're aware of this initiative and if you want to sign up. So that's one way. The second way is you can check out the website. So extra-life.org, you will find out everything you need to know from how to join to the community to who's the leaderboard right now, who's raised the most money so far to the actual documentary or kind of a little shorter video that actually explain, explains the origin of it and really explains the history of this effort and how it's really become a viral movement. Um, it is kind of exciting and it's really kind of almost, it's awe-inspiring to see how much the gaming community has really just come together around this and I can only imagine how beautiful this is going to be in the years to come. Uh, quick question, is anybody unaware of what Extra Life is? Has anybody, part okay, <laughs> don't be shy, uh, there's, there's no wrong answers. Um, has anybody participated in Extra Life? Okay. Nice. Good. Nice. Good. Is anybody thinking about participating this year? That should be. All everybody. right. I love it. <laughs> that should be everybody. By the way, the last <laughs> question. Join the fractal Ubisoft team. So I, right. I could talk a little bit about the guild. What the guild initiative is is each of the uh, big headquarter cities uh, has a group of dedicated leadership and team members who are um, dedicated to pushing the extra life um, movement forward. Um, to help organize different ways that we can raise awareness for Extra Life. Um, is that a good way to explain it? Yeah, <laughs> it's basically like a localized chapter yeah. of participants who are saying, not only am I going to do it, but I'm going to get other people to do it too. I'm going to go to the gaming conventions, whether it's E3 or Gamer X, and I'm going to just help spread the word about this, volunteer my time. No one's getting paid to do this, and it's really just an effort to really help us mobilize the community so that when we look at a crowd and we say, who's heard of Extra Life, everybody raises their hand. And when we look at the crowd and said, who does it, and everybody raises their hand. That's really, I think, the goal is to make it something that everyone does. And if it's not Extra Life, then it's another charity platform where you can really use your gaming passion and make an impact. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Now, touching on <clears throat> something you just said a moment ago, is that these are awe-inspiring numbers and results. Can some of you guys actually talk a bit about what was a powerful moment for you in one of your events, something that followed up afterwards? There's a thank you or some numbers that were just extraordinary. Is there something that really hit you that made you realize that this is absolutely worth it? This is worth everything that you put into it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I can talk about that. <laughs> uh, for me personally, last year, I raised uh, not that much. I raised like $400 and I was very proud of that $400. It was like, you know, friends, family. 
Um, and then we're having a little discussion with it with my coworkers, and one of our coworkers raised like thirteen thousand dollars or something crazy. And I realized just how small of a drop in the bucket that that contribution was. But I mean, it all builds up towards something. Um, and really, it became sort of a challenge between me and my friends and uh, my coworkers to see who could top each other. Um, and really, it's all going to a great place. So. I think for me personally, the biggest thing is gaming touches so many different people, so many different lives, and a lot of people have kids. And one of the biggest things is hearing the stories of maybe someone that has a child right now that's being affected and how much help that they've had from the hospital that they go to. Um, but also, us as adults, when we were kids, how many of your friends or your parents or your sisters or brothers have been affected? So when we're gaming and we're streaming and just in our community, Hearing people that say, you know, I'm going to give five bucks because I wish this was there for me when I was a kid. It was something that really touches. Um, I also have a gaming friend right now in San Diego that I don't really know her that well. I know her through, you know, the online world. And her son right now is in the hospital. And I see it always on Instagram. I'm just like, okay, this year I'm playing for him. My money is going to go to San Diego to help him out just because it just it touches me. And John, I think you remember you told us about the hospital, I think it was in... Uh Pittsburgh? Yeah. And that was an event where you brought out a bunch of your top broadcasters. Yeah. And was there anything there that really surprised you how that went? I was just, just it was awe-inspiring how much money we had raised. Uh, we went, we initially went into it with, with the goal of, I think, our second year we went into it with a goal of 30,000, which was 3x what we had raised the first year. And I think it was roughly 3x anyways. And we, we're, we're on a very big website. We're not a very large community. We're just, you know, a group of six or seven guys that happen to be friends with a bunch of other content creators, but our core community was not very large. And then... Just to be clear, this is KP Mod? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So Can our, you tell us real quick about what that is? It's just, it's a, we're, we're PC gamers, me and all of my buddies, we're, we're diehard PC gamers, and we just started a website full of PC gaming news just as a fun side project. We do a daily, or a weekly podcast, just something fun to do. There's no, there's no real reason behind doing it, other than we just enjoy doing it. And uh, we, we ended up befriending a lot of like the larger content creators in the YouTube space, a lot of the larger content creators on Twitch, and they decided that they were all going to join our team with us. So we go from a team of five to 10 people to a team of 100 people raising a quarter of a million dollars in a year. It was, it's pretty unique. And then last year I was privileged enough to have Jeremy, the, the guy who started Extra Life, invite me to the Children's Miracle Network celebration in Orlando. In Orlando. And I got to meet all of the, the champions. They, they fly a child down from every state, every province in Canada and Puerto Rico, I believe, mm -hmm. that there's a children's hospital. And you get to meet them. I have a book full of all of their autographs. It's just, it was, it was the most incredible experience ever to meet these children who have been through so much. Being able to, to they, they realize what, what they've been through and they realize what has made it possible. One of the little girls just walked up to me. She's like, what's your favorite color? Blue. Thank you for supporting Children's Miracle Network. Hands me a paper and walks away. Just, <laughs> there was nothing, nothing provoked the interaction at all. She just walks up to me, hands me a piece of paper with information on her, stamps it, and walks away. It was, it was a really cool experience to get to meet them and just to be a part of their celebration, get to meet Jeremy and get to meet the families affected. It, it, was, it was really cool. One of the coolest experiences of my life, and I'm really excited to go again this year. Awesome. Thank you, John. Anyone else got anything cool? No. Um, I got not cool, but we'll just say. One thing that I think is awesome about that is just that with your group, it grew so largely because of the community that was behind it. And Rooster Teeth, the reason why they did so well is because of the community that's behind them. And the reason why everybody does so well isn't because so much of the people that are, you know, those four or five people, it's the people behind them. And I think that's something that we really want to kind of emphasize is it doesn't matter what you guys are doing this year, even if it's extra life or if it's an AIDS walk or whatever it is, just taking a little bit of extra time and just donating it and really being able to help. But it's the community that's behind it. So get a group of friends together and make it fun, like competing against, compete against you. You're enjoying our team. Are you even allowed to do that? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but, you know, making it fun. So grab a few friends and compete against each other, see who can do better. It really is a, it really is a big party. Yep. Actually, yeah. 24 hours of games is a huge party. And you get to compete with your friends. You get to compete with other teams. We were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rooster Teeth last year. It was very much a competition. In the end, they raised more than us. Nobody loses, though. Yeah. You know, it's just a fun, friendly competition. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it really is a lot of fun. 
Yeah, that's one of the great things about Extra Life is uh, as gamers, we get to participate in something that we love and have a great time at, while raising money for this wonderful charity. Awesome. Uh, real quick, uh, Lizzie, can you maybe tell us a bit about the massive $40 million in donations that Humble Bundle has brought in? How do you guys keep doing that? How do you try to beat that year after year? Can you tell us a little bit about like, what happens internally where you decide this stuff? Um, well, like I said, we usually have a charity attached to um, all our promotions. Uh, when Humble Bundle first started, they partnered up with Child's Play Charity, and the first Humble Indie Bundle raised 400000 for them, um, and this was in 2010. Um, and since then, we've partnered with more than 25 charities at this point, and just bundle after bundle, we've gotten to the $40 million mark. Um, I think it's really cool that with our store, right now it's supporting American Red Cross, uh, Child's Play Charity, Electronic Arts Foundation, um, oh, sorry, Electronic Frontier Foundation, not e. <laughs> That is the wrong company. <laughs> But um, anyway. No wonder why they're doing so well. <laughs> uh, Charity Water and World Land Trust and the store alone, it's only been open for uh, six months and we, that store alone has raised a million dollars for charity. So, um, but, you know, a lot of people kind of confuse that Humble Bundle is a charity. We are still a business, but uh, we do a lot of cool 100% to charity promotions. Uh, one of them being what John was mentioning, um, the Games Done Quick Marathon, which just happened uh, late June. And that was actually one of my pet projects because I'm a huge fan of the Games Done Quick guys and they're huge uh, speedrunning nerds and like can talk about every single detail in the game. Um, but yeah, being able to be a part of that and raise a quarter of a million for Doctors Without Borders was really awesome. Um, and they're going to be running Awesome Games and Quick again, uh, which was the first one they had this year that supported Prevent Can Cancer Foundation um, later in August, so. Awesome, thank you. You should watch the Games Gun Done Quick marathons. Yeah. They're live on Twitch for the whole week. <laughs> you should definitely watch them. They're yeah. amazing. Rock has <laughs> on Twitch. It's, it's yeah. incredible. Oh, oh, I do have another thing. Um, no, go for it, please. A Talk lot of the charities that we work with also are super awesome and really transparent with how the funds are raised. So um, we did a 2K or Sid Meier bundle with 2K in February this year for Action Against Hunger. And that raised over a million dollars for um, that organization. And they said that, you know, to save a malnourished, well, Action Against Hunger. Um, they're dedicated to saving kids in poverty, and they say that it takes $45 to save a malnourished child's life, so we help 26,000 kids in Africa just from that campaign alone. And Charity Water, um, who's also part of our store, but we've done some bundles with them as well, they were able, through Humble Bundle, um, to build over 3,000 wells in Ethiopia. That is, that is awesome, because you don't really see a lot of this from a lot of other industries, but gaming audiences and gamers all over the world are really stepping up to do this, and I think that's something that's pretty endemic to the space, mm. and that's what separates us from a lot of other hobbies and passions, and I think we should all be really proud of that. We are not that lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, we talked a lot about what were the victories, the wins, the achievements here. But next thing we really want to talk about is really getting, maybe you guys can help with this, telling everybody here how to really get involved. Because mm. uh, some of us, we maybe want to do our own charity marathon. Some of us may want to put our resources and time into joining a group that is already established or is about to start and grow big. Can you guys talk about a couple suggestions or paths people can take for that? Um, I know for me, and I think for a lot of uh, gamers out there, we have groups of friends that we might game with. We have board game groups, maybe we have online gaming groups, maybe we have Twitch followers, things like that. Really, it's about finding that group of people and saying, as a group, we want to do this, um, and then checking out something like Extra Life. Uh, I think once you have that solid kind of foundation of friendship or, or you know, coworkers, whatever you need, 
um, it becomes a lot more easier and a lot more fun to get involved with something like that. So would you say that this is just, hey, we play together all the time, and everybody has their core group of people that they always play games with. I know myself, I have 14 different Skype chats of all my different friends playing League and Dota. Mm -hmm. You can always hit them up and play something. But would you say that all it takes is just one person to jump in and say, hey, let's do something and actually stream it? Or yeah. is that all it takes? I would say that, you know, it, it, with me and my buddies, we're really competitive with each other. So uh, having something that uh, will drive us towards that co uh, competitive edge, but also is contributing to something greater is uh, really good. Awesome. And John, maybe you can tell some of the people here what would be a really good way to get set up on Twitch. Depends on the platform that you're trying to stream from. If you're trying to stream from the Xbox or the console, the, the, place, or the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 were actually integrated into that, into, into both platforms. With PlayStation, you just hit the share button. With the Xbox, you tell your connect to broadcast, and you're live. It's, it's, it's quick as a you know, snap in your fingers. If you want to stream on PC, it's a little bit, little bit more complex. You have some software and things you need to set up. We have guides on our website to help you with that. Set your game to extra life. I will find you. If I find you, I will give you money. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee it. I'll give you my card when we leave this room. If I don't give you money, you come, you come find me. There we go. He said it. <laughs> it's true. Ten dollars. How many people do we have in the room? The money is for charity, not yeah. you guys. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's, <laughs> it's going, it's going to your extra life, your extra life page. But gotcha. And Rebecca, streaming is, is oh. a huge part of extra life. I think. Oh, yeah. Rebecca, I, oh, I, yeah. I think at the end of the day, if this is something that's even remotely appealing, if you're not doing it, be the champion. You know, you know, be that voice that says, hey, guys, let's do this. The moment you show that leadership, I can guarantee you they will come. It's if you build it, they will come. Set up that page, get that team, and just you will see your friends. You will see them come together because it's an effort that everyone can really say, hey, that feels good. It genuinely feels good to come together as a community and give back to people in your community. And there's nothing that will ever stop that feeling good. So just be the champion. You know, put your head, you know, put the hat in the ringer and go for it. I think, too, it's contagious. So the more that you guys do it, people will kind of follow in your footsteps. And be creative because I find that, especially on Twitch, um, the streams that are really creative are the ones that do the best. Mm. So if you think you have a really oddball idea, do it. You have to do it because it will probably be really mm -hmm. successful. And if you have any good ideas for me, please let me know. So I will try. We'll, we'll talk. Well, you want to talk creative and oddball. So we raised $10,000 in an hour during our marathon. We set a goal of mate raising $10,000 in a specific hour. I have a buddy named Dan. He's bald. And I have a buddy named Nick. We, we said if we raise $10,000 this hour, Nick will eat pancakes off of Dan's bald head <laughs> oh with syrup God. on them. So and he Dan did, right? Ate, we, they're, they're called Dan cakes now. They're not, <laughs> they're not pancakes anymore, but you can, you can have a lot of fun. You can do some stupid stuff. <laughs> no, for for $10,000, I'll eat pancakes off of Dan's head, Absolutely. too, personally. Absolutely. But one extra thing. Um, we talk a lot about groups and, uh, and the Bay Area and things, but this is actually something that's all over the nation, all over the world, even. Um, you don't have to have a group of friends. You don't, you don't even really need to live stream it. <laughs> so, so don't go out and have to make friends. Um, but also, even if you're not near a major metropolitan area, visit the website, look up what children's hospital your, um, is nearest to you, and you can see where your money's going. It goes directly to the hospital. There's no evil organization that's controlling all of this, and it's not backed by some company. This, the money you raise goes and helps directly to the hospital nearest to you. Gotcha. And can you tell us... How would you recommend someone to support a local charity versus a national one? Can you maybe expound on that a little well, bit? Well, I think that. specifically Children's Miracle Network is an initiative that it's pretty unique in the sense that it is taking kind of the mass effect of having all of these hospitals that are all across the United States and Canada and Puerto Rico. That was a very good plug right there, by the way. It was, right? <laughs> um, but every person that is fundraising in a specific area, whether you're buying an icon in the Walmart of a specific town in Kansas versus, you know, in San Francisco, that dollar is literally going directly to that hospital. There's no other body that's going to get their hands on that. Children's Miracle Network, the salaries of all of their employees are underwritten, so nothing goes to their salaries. It's 100% of everything raised. It's a gold star rated charity, and it really is, it speaks to the fact that 
when you have a group of people that are truly committed to one individual effort, you can really make a difference if you ensure that there is complete transparency and that everyone who's coming in there is really there to support that initiative. And at the end of the day, there are a billion amazing charities to support. But at the end of the day, it's always really important to think about the people right in your, na in your neighborhood who need your help. And if there's a way for you to do that, if there's a way for you to support people right there in your backyard, I think you'll see the difference right in your backyard. You know, we all want the world to be a better place. And there are so many ways that we all need to be helping the world, but I think it's always important to do it right in your backyard. Awesome, thank you guys. We have a little bit more time left, so maybe spend a few minutes want to get your guys' ideas on any specific strategies or tactics. What are some things that really help drive these things? Swag. Don't mention some crazy... <laughs> Swag. <laughs> Same. Yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. I think the thing that made us successful the last two years is, and it's kind of, I mean, not in a bad way, like, hey, I'm going to give you something for your money, mm -hmm. but, I mean, we go through, for Fragdolls, we go to every event all year long, and so what we'll do is go to random booths and take stuff. And when I say take, we ask. And then throughout the stream, we'll be like, hey, you know, this is what we're giving away for the hour. And a lot of people want that, you know, cool stuff because they don't have the opportunity to go to the same cool events that we do. So with that, we, you know, kind of be like, I'm going to give you this. Give me 10 bucks. But it, it helps, you know, just having a little bit of an incentive. Um, and not everybody has access to that stuff. So, I mean, you can make it oddball stuff, like draw a picture and next person that donates is going to get my stick figure drawing because people <laughs> might want it. Yeah, we, we do something similar every year. We steam steam sales are wonderful. It's a beautiful thing. I can get, you know, triple A games for three bucks sometimes. So anytime there's a large sale, we'll buy ten copies of that game, like myself and my group of five friends. So by the time the events come along, we have just a stockpile of things that we can give people. Donate five bucks, we'll give you a game that we might have paid ten dollars for. Or you could just get a game on the humble or you, store or you can just <laughs> and already have the money go to charity. Just saying. And they're, they're still going to donate. You don't have to have the incentives, yeah. but we find that people, uh, we had a gentleman last year who was broke, and I know he's broke because he's one of my friends, <laughs> but he donated $5, like, this is all I can donate to you guys, and then we had a really cool prize pack. He's like, damn it, I'm giving you guys my last $5, and then the next week we did it again. I'm like, I don't know how the kid ate, but he donated to Extra Life <laughs> for that sweat. It's true, though. Like, there's sort of, it's kind of sad that, you know, people need to have something to donate, but it's kind of like when I go to Safeway or Walgreens and they're like, do you want to donate a dollar too? I was like, oh, might as well while I'm here. So it's like, if you're already getting something, good. So this one's a little interesting. So it's not my personal experience, but one of our guild members named Siobhan. So she's done Extra Life since its inception. And she said this year, and she does this every year. She says for the person that essentially donates the highest amount, she will literally play the worst game they can think of for two hours to three hours and she'll live stream herself. So she's like, it's just about two to three hours of just pure cussing. And so they just get their rocks off of that. So <laughs> that's what they're, they're, they're supporting that effort. She also said this year she upped the ante. She's really afraid of clowns. She's phobic of clowns. So for the person that donates the most, she has agreed to stay at a haunted clown motel in Nevada and she said yes so this year she's a little conflicted about doing so well she said okay if I do really well it's great for the kiddos but I'm gonna have to sleep at this uh, clown motel so you can definitely get a little twisted with it but people like that there's something there's something beautiful about seeing the pain of another and if it's for the kids <laughs> it's, all for a good cause. it's for the kids it's for the babies it's for the charity you know let's do it we can all make potato salad too <laughs> it's I just think, saying <laughs> I think more than anything what we need is exposure um, while I would say the Extra Life is a very vis visible uh, organization and a lot of gamers know about it um, the great thing about today is that everybody's a gamer uh, there's mobile gamers, there's board game gamers there's all sorts of gamers and a lot of them don't know what Extra Life is if you ask your circle of friends there's going to be a few who don't and so really you know, Facebook it, Twitter whatever you use to social media just to please get the word out there and, and bring more people into this wonderful charity. Very cool. Now, we only have a few minutes left, actually. Does anybody in the audience want to ask us some questions here? Gentleman in the back. I'm sorry, what was the question? 
Oh yeah, so um, back when Humble Bundle started, we, uh, before we had the store, we had widgets, which were basically a, a point of sale where developers could easily embed it on their site. Um, so if, for instance, if you go to FTL's website, it's right there, it's a Humble Bundle widget. Um, those are really easy for us to make. Um, they cost almost nothing. Um, and a group of developers decided to build one of those and donate, basic, basically donate their games on it. Um, I think we ended up with 30 to 50 games just for the Brandon Boyer widget, which is amazing. You could pay $25 for all those games. And um, it was not only games, um, they were soundtracks, pieces of art. Um, I don't really remember exactly how much it raised, but um, that was supposed to help pay for some of Brandon's costs um, when he was diagnosed with cancer um, because he, uh, he didn't have insurance um, to cover all of it. Um, but he, he ended up breaking his goal and he donated the rest of the money to a cancer foundation. Awesome. awesome. Did I Thank answer your question? I, I, okay. Thank you, Lizzie. Anybody else? Don't be shy. No? So that's the really, really interesting thing about it is games are actually utilized as a play therapy directly in the hospital. So you might have a patient that's got cerebral palsy and can barely really utilize their extremities. And so they'll give them an iPad and a game and just let them go at it for hours. And that's a part of their physical therapy. So there are many applications where they'll utilize gameplay as a part of that physical therapy, even if it's just from the cognitive point of view. We have a lot of kids, and it's kind of crazy to think about, but we have a lot of kids that actually fall out of like two to three story windows and get really traumatic brain trauma. And so part of their therapy is really that cognitive therapy and getting them back to be able to really function at the level they were before they actually fell. And games play a huge part in that. So it's everything from curbing that boredom to actually that practical application of helping kids really build up their motor skills again and even those cognitive facilities. And let's make this last one quick. Um, we, we enable the embedding of the Extra Life widget um, directly in via the, what it's called Markdown. Couldn't even think of the language that you have to use to, <laughs> to design your profile. Um, you, can, you can build widgets straight in into our profile editor. Um, I think we'll probably have that again this year, I think. Gotcha. Guys, I think that about covers it. Let's give a big round of applause for these guys for coming out, talking about this stuff. They're really doing all the amazing work that they do year after year. <laughs>